He goes to help a motorist in need, and then he is never seen again. Hello, true crimeers. This is the baffling disappearance of Dale Williams. Viewer discretion is advised. It was a warm July 4th, 1999 day in western Colorado, specifically at the confluence of the San Miguel River and Dolores River. Some teenagers had been nearby in the water or kind of on the shore, and they noticed something in the water. It was something that was submerged. Upon closer inspection, they realized this was a vehicle that had been completely submerged in the water. So they alert authorities. The Montrose County Sheriff's Department there in Colorado they send people out and they have the vehicle towed out of the river and it is a white pickup truck specifically a 1994 ford f-250 pickup truck once they ran the plates it was they knew exactly who this vehicle belonged to a man named dale williams dale was nowhere in the truck and there was no sign of him anywhere in the area police already knew dale williams name that is because six weeks prior he was reported missing Dale Williams was a 42-year-old man who had two teenage daughters, and he had a wife of about 23 or 24 years or so. It was a very normal family, a happy marriage. His two teenage daughters absolutely adored him. He was a great father. He was known in this community. He owned a couple of businesses out there. Uh, one was an auto body repair shop and the other one was like a, a movie rental place. And the business he owned, specifically the one he worked at most, which was the auto body shop, he was in Nucla, Colorado. This is, at least back then, I'm not sure how it is now, but back then it was kind of your prototypical super small town where it's not even like an exaggeration that everybody knew everybody. Uh, you literally interacted with most people from the town in a given day. Dale was always known to be a, a solid guy, and if he said he was going to get your vehicle done, he did it. And he always kept very busy with it. He always had a very heavy workload because everyone there trusted him and everyone there liked the work that he did. He was not a mechanic, though. He was uh, he specified in auto body repair. So like broken windshields and stuff like that. Dale is someone who absolutely loved to provide for his family. He gave his daughters everything they needed. And certainly he was not a guy who would just suddenly pick up and abandon his entire family for no reason whatsoever. But on the evening of May 27th, 1999, he failed to come home for dinner. His wife was like, eh, that's not completely unusual. He probably just got a little behind at the shop because, you know, he's always having busy days. It's not unusual or, or, or out of the norm for him to come home a little bit late. So she didn't really think anything of it. When it came time for, you know, her normal bedtime, she was kind of worried because Dale still wasn't home. But, you know, again, sometimes he did that. She calls the, uh, the shop sometime around 10 p.m. or so, and nobody answers. But again, she knew it wasn't out of the norm because if he was working on something with all of his tools and gadgets going, it's very loud. And so it's kind of frequent that he would not hear the phone ringing. So she goes to bed. But then she wakes up in the middle of the night and he, she looks over. He's still not in bed with her. She goes back to bed and wakes up, rinse and repeat. She's very restless that night. And then she wakes up around dawn and he still isn't home. And at that point, she is now becoming fearful that something may have happened to him. She gets her, the, her two teenage daughters in the car and takes them to school. And then she herself drives to the shop and when she enters the shop, she notices that there is a vehicle in the garage with the hood up and all of Dale's tools are there just kind of on the ground nearby. It appeared that Dale was literally in the middle of working on this vehicle when he just kind of took off somewhere, left somewhere, or something happened to him. You know, she wasn't really, she didn't know. But she wasn't super panicking yet. She actually then drives to her mother-in-law's house, uh, Dale's mom, and asks her, have you seen or heard from him? She says no. And so Dale's mom gets in the car with his wife and they drive around to places that Dale would go to, like junkyards and stuff like that, to get needed parts and whatnot. They go to all the ones that he frequents. 
He has not been there. He wasn't there when they got there. No one had seen him. What made matters even more concerning was that, you know, I, like I said, Dale was a very good father. He's very proud of his girls. And one of his uh, kids was graduating from high school that coming weekend. And he was super excited to see this. He was really happy for his daughter. And this is not something he would just suddenly leave and abandon and avoid. And so after his wife and his mom couldn't find him, they finally report him missing to police. At that point, the disappearance of Dale Williams would go would spread like wildfire around the town. Again, it's a small town. Once a story is out, everybody knows it. And that's kind of how police got some tips and information from people. One woman came forward to police. Her name was uh, Tammy Lawrence. And she notified police that on that afternoon of May 27th, 1999, Dale actually drove by her house because she wanted to have some work done, uh, a windshield replaced. And he drove to her house to say, hey, I probably won't be able to get to that until about next week at some point. And Tammy Lawrence thought this was odd because, not because he couldn't do the repair, but she was fine with that. She thought it was odd that he drove to her house to tell her this because she's like, he could have just called me and it would have been totally fine. But she did note that Dale, when he drove up to her, her place, he seemed very, uh, he seemed kind of like antsy, like he was in a hurry to do something or go somewhere. And so Tammy Lawrence is technically, as far as anyone really knows, the last confirmed sighting of Dale Williams. But a friend of Dale's would then come forward um, he was a pastor in the area named Tom Ross. So Tom Ross and his uh, young child had gone to Dale's shop shortly before Dale had been seen at Tammy's place. Dale told Tom, like, hey, I'm kind of busy today, I have a lot of work, but I probably have a few minutes to play, you know, just like a round of darts. And so they played darts for a few minutes. Um, and then Tom Ross says in the middle of that, Dale gets a phone call at the shop. Now, Tom cannot hear the other person on the other line, but he can hear Dale kind of just sort of saying, okay, where are you? You know, what, what's the trouble? And he would then, after he hung up the phone, told Tom that there is a stranded motorist who needs my help. Dale told Tom that this motorist was stranded on a remote stretch of highway about three quarters of a mile east of this uh, town of Bedrock, Colorado. Tom assumed the caller was a female, but he does admit that he did not hear their voice. He just is basing that off of how Dale was speaking to the person on the phone. That's how he kind of just assumed, assumed I guess, based on inflection or tone. I'm guessing that he was talking to a woman, but that is not confirmed that it was a female caller. Now, Dale said on the phone call, according to Tom, that he would bring his tow truck. He said that to the caller, but then apparently the caller told Dale, no, don't bring the tow truck. It's going to be just a simple thing. Now, like I said, Dale was not a mechanic. He did not, he was not like someone who did like actual repairs on vehicles, but he knew enough to help people when they needed it. Tom also believes that the motorist that Dale was talking to on the phone was likely not alone and that it seemed like, according to what Dale said, that the motorist was in some sort of panic. And it was also strange to police and to Dale's family that because Dale wasn't a mechanic, as to why would somebody call Dale to come do some sort of mechanic type job um, with my, you know, stranded vehicle. But again, Dale was just a helpful guy. That's just was his nature. It's what he did. At any rate, um, they did not at that point know who the caller was. Police would later find out that the caller, the phone number, came from a cell phone that had been reported stolen. Stolen by who though? I'm not sure but it did not help them find who the actual caller was or confirmed if they were male or female. At that point also, you know, they drive out in the general area of where they think this motorist may have been calling from and there was nothing there. Obviously, I mean, this was now a while later, but you know, you never know. There might've been some clues left behind in this area, but there wasn't. So at that point, they put up missing flyers posters all over the town, um, including in the town's post office. And within a couple of days of, of Dale's wife putting up these posters, somebody, they don't know who, somebody began to rip them down and take them all off the walls. So they're like, well, that's unusual because who would do that? So they put up more posters 
And then once again, two or three days later, the posters are now gone. Someone ripped them off the wall. So then they, she notifies police like something's strange here. And so what they do is they manage to get a, uh, a hidden camera in the post office to look directly at where these posters were being put up. They put up more posters. This time, they actually catch on camera the person who did this. Now, the image I'm showing you is not a great photo. It's actually blurred out, I believe, as well, because this man's identity has never been publicly released. However, they were able to find out who this man was that was ripping down these posters. And it turns out he had a connection to Dale and Dale's wife. You see, Dale and his wife were friends with this man and his wife. They had been friends for quite some time. However, about a year or so prior, Dale and his wife would end up helping this other man's wife literally pick up and move to another state to get away from this guy that she was trying to leave him. And they did all of this in secret. But then this, uh, this guy found out how what Dale and his wife did in helping his now ex-wife leave. And the guy was not happy. He was very pissed off about it. He would confront Dale, especially on a couple of occasions. Nothing violent or anything like that, but it was just, it, it caused an obvious, it was a very strong confrontation that they were going through. This guy was clearly very upset with Dale for helping his ex-wife or his wife or whatever the case may be at the time. Then, um, I guess like sometime shortly after all of this sort of blows up, Dale gets to his shop one morning and he sees a whole bunch of torn up, ripped up photos all over the ground in front of the, the shop. All of these photos just so happen to be photos of Dale and his wife with this other couple who is now, you know, separated and all that basically is the cause of all the turmoil in this group. And then a couple of days after that, Dale's wife is working at the video rental store. And as she's taking uh, return videos out of their the basket there where people return videos, she also found a pouch. And in that pouch was a gun. And it just so happened to be a gun that was stolen from Dale's auto shop. The photos that were torn up and thrown all over the ground as well were also originally in Dale's auto shop. So someone stole those photos and the gun and then gave them back, but in kind of creepy ways. <laughs> Once all this happens, they notify police that they feel like they're being harassed and possibly threatened by this guy who's really upset with them. They interview this guy, they question him about the burglaries and about the harassment, and he says he had nothing to do with it. And there really was no evidence that he did it. And so they kind of had no choice but to just go, we have to leave it at that. Then fast forward about 11 or 12 months later, Dale suddenly disappears one day and vanishes into the afternoon and is never seen again. Then six weeks after he's reported missing, his truck is found submerged in a river. The police and I guess crash experts would kind of analyze the scene. So first, and foremost, the the were the placement of the vehicle in the river, it could not have gotten there accidentally. It's not like Dale was driving and then just suddenly he wouldn't like swerve and it went into the river. It was they said it would have to have been a very sudden and sharp turn in order to get the truck into the position it was found in. So they came to the determination that that truck was placed there deliberately. Someone took the truck and drove it into the river to hide it. And they know it wasn't Dale because Dale wasn't found in the car. And they also searched the river. They had several different crews of people, uh, scuba divers and everything going underneath and looking. They found like a couple of tools from like his toolbox that may have been in the back of his truck, but they never found any sign of Dale himself, no clothing or anything like that. The amount of debris that was in the truck and like the amount of rust that was on the truck also helped them determine that the truck was likely in the river that since the day he disappeared, that it had been in there for at least several weeks. But then police ran into a problem. So Dale is last seen by Tammy Lawrence to go out to this supposedly stranded motorist, and then he disappears. But what they found out through talking to people in the town is that there were several people who saw Dale's truck parked back at the auto shop sometime around 1.30 p.m., which would have been about 70 to 90 minutes or so after he responded to the stranded motorists. And so people said they for sure saw his truck outside the shop after the fact. Then 
later on in the day, sometime around 5, 5.30 p.m., other people said they saw Dale in a uh, like a market or a shop, and that was in the nearby town of Naturita. Again, these are this is also a small town where everybody knows everybody, and according to people that knew Dale, they're like they believe that the sightings of Dale at five or six p.m. that day, because these are trustworthy people who are who are giving these eyewitness accounts, and they believe that truly Dale was seen several hours after he responded to that motorist call. So then. What happened after that? But those are not officially confirmed sightings. It's really kind of more still just rumored sightings of him. The last confirmed sighting of Dale was about 12.15 p.m. by Tammy Lawrence. When Dale disappeared and when the truck was found, they circled back to the individual, this guy who had been angry with Dale and his wife with regards to the situation with his wife. They questioned him about Dale's disappearance. They asked him, do you know what happened? Anything like that. He denied having any responsibility for all of it. They then check his alibi as to where he was during that time frame of May 27th, 1999. And police, according to them, say they have checked his alibi and they say for the most part, they've been able to confirm his alibi. There is also that chance that this man set this whole thing up, but needed to be somewhere to make it look like he wasn't the one responsible. But they've never they've never publicly named him. They've actually never publicly named any suspects, any persons of interest. The case really kind of just went cold and fizzled out. And in recent years, his now adult daughters uh, have been talking about his story, trying to get his story back out there because this case is still unsolved. Nobody knows where Dale is. Nobody knows what happened to him that day. Nobody knows who that motorist is. Nobody knows if it was a setup or if that was legit. But what we do know is that motorist has never come forward. So if they were truly innocent, if they had nothing to do with whatever happened, how come they haven't said anything? How come they haven't called police? How come they haven't even reported anonymously, hey, I was the person? Nothing. They, so that makes them believe that that motorist was absolutely involved in what happened to Dale. But the question is, is what exactly happened and why? What was the mo motive here? Like, why target Dale? I mean, they absolutely targeted him. This wasn't some kind of like random chance encounter. This was somebody who deliberately lured him out to a location, but for what? For why? And now here we are in 2024, this happened back in 1999, still don't know. Still have absolutely no idea what happened to Dale Williams on that day on May 27th, 1999. It is still an unsolved mystery, but somebody somewhere out there has got to know the truth. Perhaps that someone is you. Like I said, you can report any information anonymously. You do not have to say who you are, you just have to say what you know. Dale and his family deserve that. They deserve to know where he is, and if he is dead, they deserve to have him back and bury him properly. If you have any information about the whereabouts of Dale Williams or what happened to him that day, please call 970-249-9110 or call Crime Stoppers at 970-249-8500. Please help Dale come home, and if it's what needs to be done, please help Dale Williams and his family get the justice he rightfully deserves. But that is it for this case. True crime, a Rooney Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. Hope you found it interesting. Um, as usual, if you are new here, hello, my name is Mike. I tell true crime stories here on YouTube. So please subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. Give this video a like so more people can see it. The more people that see it, you never know if the right pair of eyes might see it and be able to you know, answer these questions. I also tell short form true crime stories over on TikTok. I have a couple different pages. Uh, both of those TikTok pages are linked in the link tree in the description of this video below. So feel free to check those out if you want to. And I also wanna say that I have uh, stopped or discontinued the merch store. It just really wasn't, we don't really sell much. So um, it is no longer in service. It is gonzo. Um, so you won't be able to find that, I don't think. I'm not sure if Adam's deleted it yet or not, but working on it. <laughs> But also lastly, if there is a case you want me to cover, please just send me a really quick email. My email is also listed below. Uh, just send me the name of the case, where it happened, when it happened. I'll add it to my list. Uh, the list is 6,300 plus names long. I pick the cases I cover each time at random, so I'll get to it when I can, but I can't promise you when that'll be. 
But that is it for this video, True Crime or Rooney. So until the next time, Case, I'll see ya. <laughs>